the first problem we have is that now this uh, Jupyter Lab is running on the local host of the remote Colab server. And if we try to click on this link here, it will try to access this um, Jupyter Lab, but from our local host, we are in the client side, so we are connecting to a remote environment, and this would be so our local host, and of course, it's not going to find. So in order to solve this problem, we could use, for example, some tunneling, some TCP uh, tunneling, and then we will tunnel this local host from the remote environment to, for example, a public IP, and then from this public IP, we could access the Jupyter Lab. Another problem is that, for example, if we want to continue to use this uh, Colab notebook here, we would have to run the Jupyter Lab without blocking the Colab environment, and there are ways how we can do this. In order to solve this problem, accessing the local host on the remote server, on the remote Colab environment, we can make use of ngrok, and ngrok will offer tunneling and if you go here to ngrok.com you can see on pricing and you see that there is a free you can sign up for a free account and this will give you http and tcp tunnels on random urls and ports so what it will do it will tunnel this local host so this ip address too it will create a public uh, url that you can access so you can, if you want to follow this tutorial, you can go ahead, sign up for a free account, and then you can sign up with GitHub, or you can sign up with Google, and then you will have your NGROC account, and inside your uh, NGROC account, you have an authorization token that you can use uh, in different applications. After you create your NGROC account, you will see here uh, the online tunnels, so if you make one of this tunneling, make use of uh, this one of this, you should appear here. And also here at your authorization token, you will get this authorization token that we're going to use later on. So after you made a, an account in Grok, we can go and install Pi and Grok. So now we have an N Grok account and we have by ngrok so we can use this ngrok from our colab notebook our next step will be to start this Jupyter lab but we will want to use and by ngrok later so this cannot be a blocking command in our colab so we need to make use of different strategy we are not going to run using this exclamation mark here to access the shell what we are going to do is we are going to use the get ipython system raw then we are going to execute jupyterlab allow root no browser because we want it to run in the background we will set our ip to uh, localhost 0000, 000 um, but we can also change um, the port this is not um, necessary it's already localhost by default but the um, default port is 8888 but we, you can choose a different port and here we will run in the background so now when execute the cell and if for example we do a jupyter server list we see that there is a jupyter server running on the 0.0.0, .0 or 13,000 and this is an authorization token that is created by the Jupyter server. So this is a token for the Jupyter server. There's nothing to do with the token of ngrok that we're going to run later. So we have our Jupyter lab running in the background and now we can use by ngrok to make the tunneling from this IP to a public IP that we can access over the internet. So what we can do now is that from pi ngrok we will import ngrok 
we will just terminate any open tunnels if it exists as we uh, it's not necessary at this point because we didn't use by and grok before but this is a good common practice here you're going to enter your authorization token that it's available from this link here so if you go here to your um and grok account and you'll see your authorization token and it's very important that you don't share this authorization token with anyone otherwise people can start using your account and you can um, change this authorization token if you feel that um, it's time to change so you would enter your authorization token here and now we will configure and grok to use your authorization token and then we can after this step, we can do ngrok connect and we will use the same port as we used here, which is the 13,000. So I'm going to use the 13,000. And also, you can add different um, tunneling uh, types and you can enter different IP and you can use, for example, a TCP or an HTTP tunnel. In this case, by default, we are going to use the HTTP, the protocol tunnel defaults to HTTP. This is why we will not, don't need to enter here, anything else. So we configure to use our NGROC authorization token. Now we are configured to use the port, the same one we want our Jupyter Lab to use. And now ngrok generates this URL that is accessible from the internet. And now we can access here and it's going to ask um, authenticate the session. So we could have created a password before, but we can also use this token here. Right here. And we can log in and it will start a Jupyter Lab session inside our Google Colab environment. So it's loading Jupyter Lab. And now we have Jupyter Lab inside our Colab environment. 